We install PG Pool and we're trying to connect via PG Pool. But we're running into some issues. Basically, once we install PG Pool, we need to configure several things so that PG Pool redirection works. Let's see what those configuration parameters are. All right. Now, right here. We tried to run this command to route to Postgres nodes via PG Pool using this port, but it's not working as expected. Let's see why that is. What configuration changes are needed so that it works smoothly? This is the streaming replication architecture with PG Pool. The client connection will talk to the PG Pool and then the PG Pool will route the right traffic to the primary node, then the read traffic to the standby node. We can have multiple standby nodes, but in this initial demo, we are just starting with one standby node and one primary. All the right traffic, like the deletes, updates, inserts, etc., should go to the primary, whereas the selects should go to the standby. All right. And also, there's something called backend wait which will proportionally distribute the traffic. So we will see about those configuration parameters later in the coming slides, okay? Let's get to the right page here. These are some of the important parameters that we need to change once the PG pool is installed. Just installing it itself is not enough. And things won't work without the needed configuration changes. Okay, remember that. The first parameter is listen addresses. By default, it's set to local host, and we need to change it to star or something so we can allow the connections to flow in. And then the backend host name and backend port. So backend host name zero, backend host name one, port zero, port one. What are these? Basically, if we see the previous diagram, these are the backends. In the PG pool terms, this is backend zero and this is backend one. We need to give the host name port addresses of the backend nodes so that PG pool knows how to route the traffic and where to route the traffic. It's very important there. Now, basically, host name zero can be our primary here. And then the port, if you're using 5432, give 5432 or if you're using something else to the port and then back in host name one here in this demo we will be using a standby node and then the port 5432 here in this case but if you're using a different port you can give a different name so these are some of the configuration parameters you need to change once you install pg pool all right now also these, so load balance mode should be turned on if you want to enable the load balancing. Like we discussed, load balancing in the sense all the writes would be routed to primary, whereas the reads would be distributed between primary and standby nodes. And then what is SR check user? SR means streaming replication check user, streaming replication check password. So you need to supply these credentials so that PG Pool 2 can keep checking for streaming replication issues, streaming replication topology, and see if there are any replication delay and things like that, okay? We need to supply these parameters so that PG Pool can keep checking the health of the streaming replication using this. All right. Also the health check user and health check password. We need to supply these in the configuration file. And then once we do that, basically PG pool will start checking the health of the nodes. Let's say one of the nodes go down. PG pool can take some appropriate actions. For that, we need to enable these parameters as well. Okay. And then the back end way, this is really important. So when you try to load balance, if you don't set it, to a particular value, it won't work. 
the load balance won't work. We'll see that in the demo. These are some of the important parameters you need to change before you can start using PG Pool 2. Okay. Now, that being said, let us go ahead and see the actual demo. Now, again, this is another diagram depicting the same. Looks the same, right? Load balancing using PG Pool 2. The client connections are coming to PG Pool 2 and then they're being routed to the primary, their writes, and they're split amongst the primary and the standby with their reads, okay? We're gonna see all of these in a demo, so you can better understand how these actually work, okay? And we will see the significance of backend weight. Why should you set the value to the parameter? Then we will demo the load balancing. And then we will run PG Bench, to run a benchmark load against the cluster via PG pool. Okay, and we will see if the load balancing is working fine or not. And what is this performance impact of adding PG pool to the existing architecture? Let's go ahead and do this first. And then we will deal with the other slides. Let's proceed to the demo, okay? Let's get to the right page here, okay? All right. By default, this is the directory where the configuration file exists by default. So let's pull that up. All right, let's type this in so we can get to the right page. All right. And then this is the configuration file right here. Open it. Now, okay, down here. All right. Now, we already changed this. The default is not star. The default is local host. And we already changed it to star. And the default port is four nines, as you have seen. These are the backend settings that I've been talking about here. So you have backend host name, backend port, and then the weight. All of these are not set. By default, they are commented out and there's no value for the host name. These are all the default settings that we need to change. According to the discussion we had before, we need to change this. Also, there are some other parameters like login parameters, if you need, so we need to change it. And then SR, the SR check user and password. Remember, we're discussing these configuration parameters, okay? We need to change that and give the username and password so that PG Pool can start checking for streaming replication issues, okay? And also there's a health check user that we discuss. And all of these need to be changed before we can start using PG Pool. As a summary, let's go back to our slides and we're gonna look at the parameters once again. Listen address, this is already changed. We need to change the backend host name, backend port for the first node. The same for the second. And then we need to make sure that the load balance mode is enabled. Streaming check user and password is supplied. Health check user and password is supplied. The backend weight is set. These are the parameters we will be changing now. I already have a preset configuration, so let me get to that. Okay. Now, this is one I'm gonna be using. This is the preset config file that I tested and made. I used it and I made sure that everything exists, whatever we need for the demo. As you see, the backend host is set to this and the port is set to the 5432. This is the first host, the primary host, and this is the second host right here or the standby host. We have everything set. And then also let me check the streaming check user. All right, type that in. 